Welcome to this, this edition of FPD Roll Call. Today we'll be talking with the Chairman of the Florissant Emergency Management Commission, Robert Smith, about the Florissant CERT program and how you can get involved and in, in what it's all about. Uh, thank you, Robert, for, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you. Uh, so, first of all, some people may not know what the Florissant Emergency Management Commission is or that we even have one. Could you explain a little bit of, about what the Emergency Management Commission is and what, what they're responsible for? Sure. Uh, the Florissant Emergency Management Commission was started in August of 2002. Uh, the commission consists of nine members, one from each ward, and the commissioners oversee um, CERT members that have completed the CERT uh, class and if ever activated, they would be the team leaders for their ward and each member uh, thereof. So the commission also uh, works with the police department, uh, the fire department, and kind of like with the first responders. And we also um, set up for the triage and uh, medical, uh, life search and rescue. So the commission, it, does a variety of things, but the main thing is we oversee uh, the CERT program uh, that FEMA started, uh, actually took over back in uh, 97. Okay. So what is the CERT program? Uh, first of all, CERT's an acronym, so could you explain what that stands for and then kind of get into what the CERT program is? CERT program, uh, CERT means Community Emergency Response Team. Okay. Uh, you're basically trained in, um, like I said, the triage, the light search and rescue. Um, you also do uh, the, uh, you do paperwork for um, the police or fire department that lets them know, okay, this person is injured here or, you know, or, or there's a house or it's been searched. Uh, you also have the uh, skill sets you do, um, team organizations. We also have disaster preparedness um, and the assessments of, like I said, residential areas. But once you've completed that course, then you can either keep it for, you know, just walk away and you've learned that skill set for yourself. But what we ask is if you would join a team, so if there is ever a major disaster, then we would have enough citizens within Florissant that know how to do certain things because, like I said, if something happens, the first responders are going to be overwhelmed and we need those citizens to come out and help until they can get there, until you guys can get there. Right, and, and with these, uh, in, in these classes, we, we like to stress that, you know, there's only a certain amount of resources that the police department or the fire department have and uh, if there's a major disaster, we rely, we will have to rely on the citizens to, to assist in the search and rescue, the, the, the light uh, uh, first aid, um, building searches, things like that, that, right. that the fire department, the police department just can't handle at that time. Correct. So, uh, and, and the idea of the CERT program too is that the, uh, the citizens who are trained need to be able to uh, take care of themselves and their neighbors for, for three days. For three days. And within those three days, um, you should have a certain amount of supplies, uh, food, uh, shelter, your uh, medical, and uh, water. Water is the biggest thing that you need, probably a gallon per person per day for those three days. Right. So um, there's, we always stress that even if you aren't a cert, uh, certified, at least have water, medical, and clothing, and you know, like I said, try to find shelter for those three days until, and it's mostly, like I said, three days. Right, okay. But so this training is, is we would like to everybody to, to come through the training. Yes. Um, obviously, not everybody's gonna be able to do it, but for the people that are interested, can you explain how they would contact uh, the commission to try and get some training? Yes, the commission, uh, you can email the commission at emc at com. 
Uh, also, we have meetings uh, once a month, the fourth Thursday of the month at the police department at 7 p.m. So it's open to the public. Anyone can come and attend. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, anything, you can come and ask questions or, or email us or even uh, email the police to email you at the police department or anything like that. With yes, questions. and my contact information, I give it out at the end of the show every, every time, but uh, I'll give it out again right now. You can contact me at my office at 314-830-6042 or uh, email cdhart at floresatmo.com and, and I'll be happy to, to coordinate uh, getting your information to the commission and uh, getting you signed up for any uh, cert training. Uh, one more thing about the training uh, before we take a break. Is there any type of, can anyone do this training? Uh, you know, explain if there's any type of, of physical uh, limitations. There are, there may be some physical limitations as far as uh, endurance is like if you are walking a couple of blocks to do your uh, light search and rescue. Um, you also have to be 18 years uh, 18 years old to participate in the CERT program. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a fluorescent resident, but we prefer the fluorescent residents because we are trying to build this program uh, stronger uh, within the fluorescent community. But yeah, you don't have to necessarily be a fluorescent resident to take the course, but we would really hope and push our floors and residents to come out. Right, because the idea is to get the CERT teams, you the know, teams and, and we're not gonna rely on, on people from traveling from a long distance Correct. to a natural disaster Correct. to, to, sh to, cause essentially you have to more or less walk. Yes. You, uh, to where you're, where you're gonna, where, where you're, you're gonna, gonna meet up. And what happens right. is, like I said, if there's something that does happen, each ward will have a meeting location and you would go to that meeting location and from that, the commissioner of that ward would disperse you where they needed, need you to go. You always go in uh, teams of two. So that way, if someone gets in trouble, you know, gets hurt or anything of that sort, you, it's basically a buddy system. Right. Um, also, one thing I'd fail to mention in the uh, training, we do uh, light fire suppression and uh, that's, to me, very knowledgeable around the house. They teach you about, uh, you know, how big a fire should be that you personally should handle. And, uh, you know, when you're out doing light search and rescue, you know, you tend to want to help everyone and you may not be able to, you know, but, you know, you may have to back away from a fire or a building or if someone's injured, you know, you may have to step back. but. Uh, they do, they teach you all of that in the course. The course is eight weeks long, it's 21 yeah. hours. Um, the last week, uh, there's like a small review test and a graduation. You receive two IDs. Um, the purpose of the IDs are when you are dispersed in the field, one ID is left with your commissioner, team leader, and the other one you take with you to wear around your neck. Similar to the one Similar to that this. you had. Right. That way, at the end of the day, after everyone has returned, we should have no IDs left at the desk. And if there is, we know we've written where this individual went, so we know to send out a team right. to look for them. Perfect. Well, uh, you know, if, if anyone's interested in what we've been talking about here and, and this sounds like something that you want to do, please use that contact information. And we'll also put that up at the end of the show as well. Please use that contact information to let us know if you're interested and that you'd like the training and that you'd like to participate. Uh, please contact us if you were interested. Uh, we've got some items on the, the desk here. Uh, some cert items that we talked about right before the break. Correct. And uh, so Robert's gonna explain some of the things that we have here. Um, first of all, they all these items are some of the stuff that comes with the cert they bag with that you would get correct. with uh, the training. Once you've completed the training, there is a backpack that you're issued and it comes with these supplies plus a few, a few more, but the main supplies are the vest here, uh, it is a, a reflective vest that you would wear 
um, when you are activated a, a helmet, uh, again, that protects you from any debris that's falling. Uh, the tape here is for medical triage. Uh, we have a uh, first aid kit and it basically includes gauze, um, band-aids, um, tape, aspirin, scissors, things of that sort. Okay. Goggles because you have to definitely protect your eyes when you are out out there. Um, this is probably one of the most important tools that we have. This is what they call a multi-tool for uh, CERT. This will, you can turn the gas off at your house, okay. you can turn the water off at the house. If you need to break a window to get someone out or any, basically anything that you would need a uh, to open things with, uh, wedge something, but this right here is probably one of the most important things that we get okay. uh, after we complete it. Because once a, something happens and that gas is running, you know, you're also you're showing how to turn that off. Gotcha. And speaking of the gas, that is a it's a non-sparking non-sparking tool. tool. So Correct. when you're turning that gas off, the the, the sparks won't it, it won't create sparks that can ignite the exactly the leaking exactly gas. yes. So and then also I think we have a cert backpack here. Yes. This is what it actually comes in. All this this equipment here, and then you can you know wear it on your back and kind of carry that along. And everything you, as you can see is real conspicuous with the CERT logos, so you're, you're readily identifiable uh, in your neighborhood, and, and so most, most people uh, would, would realize that you are uh, working in an official capacity. And of course, we're trying to, to spread that word exactly uh, right now and let people know that this, this program's out there. Uh, you mentioned the first aid kit. Obviously, this is a pretty basic first aid kit. Correct. Um, and, and most of the items in this kit are are basic. Are basic. So and it's a kind of a starting point. Right. Uh, is there anything that you can suggest for people, you know, if they don't want to go through the program, obviously you can prepare at home, or if you do go through the program, you can update your kit as well. Correct. Uh, can you go into some of the items that people could could use at home and gather at home to uh, prepare for an emergency? Yeah, if, you, if you're at home and you, like I said, you don't go through the course, there are, there's a few things just off the, you know, that you would need to prepare and actually use in a backpack. Um, you might get like a manual a manual can opener. A lot of people don't think, you know, electricity is gone. So, you know, you can't get access to your food. Um, I would say a three day supply of, medi of medication, um, hand sanitizer. Um, you're also gonna have, um, most, most times kids keeping at home on hand is a fire extinguisher. You never know what might happen, you know, after an earthquake or even a tornado or sure. anything of that sort. Um, you definitely always want to protect your hands. So gloves, make sure you have gloves. Rubber and, gloves. Yeah, rubber gloves, non-latex gloves, or, you know, a lot of people like to use their leather gloves. That way nothing can really get through or prick their hand where, you know, you're going to bleed or anything of that sort. Um, and non-latex because people, some people are allergic. To latex. Right, if you have to do any type of light exactly. first aid or anything. So if you're helping your neighbor or, so, or anyone in your family, then you definitely want to have those on okay. for your own protection too. Gotcha. Um, scissors, like I said, to cut, you have to cut material, cut uh, clothing to, you know, assist someone that's bleeding and has a, a gash or anything of that sort. Gotcha. But yeah, a few, like I said, those are just a few things that you definitely want to have. You always want to have uh, water on hand, and a lot of times, you know, we may not have the water, but everyone has a hot water heater in their home. And when an emergency occurs, the first thing to do is to shut the water off the main valve coming in from the outside. Right. So it, it, the hot water heater doesn't get contaminated if the water lines break. And once the water cools, then you've got usually 40 gallon tanks. So you've got 40 gallons of water to use until uh, you can get some assistance with, you know, maybe bottled water or, or you can have a first responder get there with supplies. Man, I guess the important part about that is, like you said, make sure it cools down first. Make sure it cools down first, exactly. Crack that thing open and yes. get the scalding hot water to exactly. come out of there. But yes. yeah, the 40, and a lot of people don't realize that is, you know, you've got 40 gallon, typically 40 gallons of 
you know, clean, clean water, clean water right there in your basement or, or, or in your first level of your house or wherever it might be. Exactly. And you can use that just as much as you can the, the bottled water. So yeah, that's exactly. A, and that's a huge tip. That's a huge, huge uh, yeah. amount of water. Right. Now, and another thing to mention maybe about that too is if it's in your basement and the structure is not safe, then obviously you would want to abandon that. Abandon that. Just water, but totally. Uh, uh, you know, maybe depend on your bottled water yeah, or that you have. I always, I mean, a lot of the department stores around always have sales on the 24, 36 pack water. And maybe if you buy two or three, just always keep on hand and rotate them out. You know, water is, like I said, that's the most important right. thing you want to have. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, and it's usually 72 hours, like I said, three days, uh, just have enough water on hand. Right. Yeah. But, okay. and you definitely want the sanitary, um, you know, to keep things sanitary so no one gets sick. Because uh, that's just one more thing on top of, you know, trying to keep people uh, from getting injured. You don't want anyone sick uh, from that. So definitely, like I said, hand sanitizer is great right. uh, in that situation. And so uh, the biggest thing is, is we, you know, we're trying to get people prepared for a natural disaster. Um, Obviously, we've had tornadoes in the area in the last couple of years, so that's a Correct. very real po real possibility. Um, earthquakes are a very real possibility. I don't think we're going to have any tsunamis or anything like that anytime no. soon. But, um, you know, a very, very uh, possible earthquake. Earthquake. Yes, very possible. So we r live on the New Madrid Fault, and it's, the river ran backwards once before. And sure. It's not safe. <laughs> it shakes hot enough. You know, we... Would like for everyone to be prepared you know you know a lot of people may not take the course which okay but we would like the majority of people to take the course and basically the course just keeps your household that's one less household that the first responders have to worry about right you know because someone has been trained on how to take care of themselves and their family right and that's the basic um, the basic goal it's just be able to take care of yourself and your family. Right. And then if, if people want more information on emergency preparedness, they can go to FEMA.gov.gov. Gov, yes. And I believe that's up on your screen now, so FEMA.gov. And then also, um, you know, there's other uh, items that they might suggest too as far as the, the home kits and things like that that, that you can Correct. Gather. There's a uh, there's a list that uh, we'll post that has several items that you can build for your own home kit. Gotcha. Um, and like I said, once you've got your kit, it's smart to always have a, you know, maybe have three three kits on hand, one at work, one at home, and one in your car, because you never know when. Sure, you could be in your car when the, the disaster hits. Exactly, and, right. so, you know, it's always smart to be prepared, um, so that way, at least you're you're safe. You're taken care of, and your family's taken care of. Great. Well, Robert, I appreciate you coming in and, and letting us know uh, about the CERT program, the Emergency Management Commission, and then trying to get people uh, prepared for a natural disaster. So I appreciate you coming in and letting the audience uh, uh, get that information and kind of soak in. And hopefully they'll they'll sign up for the class. I hope we'll so. See I re we really would like so. to have more citizens sign up. All right. I, I appreciate you. Thank you very so. much. All right. We're now going to get into the uh, April 2015 crime statistics. There were four robberies in the month of April at the following locations. On April 5th in the 1000 block of Shackelford. On April 7th in the 2700 block of North Highway 67. On April 27th in the 1700 block of Tahoe and also on April 27th at 74 Grandview Plaza. There were 12 burglaries reported in the month of April and they were all residential burglaries. Uh, they, were at the, they were reported at the following locations. April 4th in the first block of Charlotte, April 7th in the first block of Trinity, April 9th in the 800 block of Thompson, April 12th in the 200 block of Birchlawn. April 13th in the 1200 block of St. Patrice. 
April 15th in the 1700 block of Clover, April 16th in the 1300 block of East Duchenne, April 18th in the 1200 block of Grandview Gardens Court, April 20th, the first block of Rhonda, April 21st in the 1400 block of Zurich, April 23rd in the 700 block of Mendocina Court, and April 24th in the 300 block of Countryside. There were seven motor vehicle thefts in the month of April and they were reported at the following locations. On April 3rd in the 200 block of North Jefferson, on April 14th in the 2300 block of Montezuma, in April, on April 14th in the 1100 block of Flordon, April 23rd in the 1900 block of Washington, April 24th in the 400 block of Versailles, April 24th in the 1300 block of Loveland, and on April 28th in the 3100 block of Sir Christopher, which is the Aspen Woods apartment complex. There were 62 stealings in the month of April, and they were uh, broken up into the following categories. There were 21 shopliftings reported, nine stealings from motor vehicles, there were four stealings of motor vehicle parts and 28 miscellaneous stealings. There were 12 property damages reported during the month of April. Well, that wraps up another edition of the FPD Roll Call. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please remember, dial 911 if you have an emergency. If it's a non-emergency and you'd like to contact the police department, dial 314-831-7000. Or, re or reach us on our website at www.fluorescentmo.com backslash police. Thanks for watching this edition of FPD Roll Call. Be safe and have a great summer.